What made it this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Christian. On October 15, 2019, Christine shared a link on Twitter to a page on the fundraising site GoFundMe, which aimed to gather funds for her trip to the My Little Pony-themed convention, BabsCon. A Twitter user asked why did she not get a job instead to make money, to which she wrote that she was unemployable because of online haters, and that she was already constantly employed as a goddess. The Twitter user returned to reply that she would be fine if she left the internet and got a job pushing trolleys at a supermarket, and that she was not unhirable, but lazy instead. Chris wrote back that she was not lazy, but busy instead. Chris then blocked her critic. At the same time, artist Ben Saint continued to develop his comic story to focus on slime and slime-based characters, much to the dislike of Chris, who told him to go back to making stories about Saint's original characters Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk. On October 16th, Chris's devout follower and love interest, Jacob Sockness, proposed that she should remove all tiers on her Patreon, wherein people paid less than $20 per month because it was uneconomical. He then vowed to pay for the orders himself, disregarding his trip to her house to instead try help her get the household out of debt. Later that day, Christine notified her paying supporters on Patreon that she managed to catch up with back orders of Sonichu comic books to be sent to her patrons, though she skipped the personally signed requests. As recompense for those who had paid for signed copies of her books, she would send to them her custom-made Sonichu-themed expansion pack for the MLP-themed trading card game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Ship Fic Folder. During this time, Christine continued to busy herself creating more original cards based around the Sonichu universe, including one dedicated to Sturban Chu, a Sonichu created by the Idea Guys, and Robert Chu, the Idea Guys influenced Sonichu incarnation of her father, Bob Chandler. On October 19th, Chris commented on an update to a comic created by one of her enablers, Rosie Lilichu, which focused on Lilichu's original character, Liliana writing that she would prefer to see more than the one page per month of the story as was declared by the artist. Also on that day, a user on Reddit posted about his and his brother's experience with meeting Christine when they surprised her with a visit to her home, posting a photo they took together. He mentioned that she smelled a little like marijuana, though it is unconfirmed whether she was partaking in the narcotic again at the time. The Reddit user later posted an audio recording of their meeting on YouTube. Chandler? Yes. Hello. We live in the area, sorry to bother yeah. you, but yeah. we've been fans for a few years and stuff and thank you. thought we'd kind of give some gifts. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, dude. Yeah, it's nice to meet yeah. you. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, how you been? I've been doing all right. That's cool. Uh, we're doing very well, you know, just having to cope with the events. Of the yeah, I, and everything. I heard about the, the situation with the guy. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to hear about that. Oh, well, don't worry about it. It's yeah. all cool. We're all looking out for your best interests, yeah. and you definitely have our support, so. Thank you. Yeah. I love your blue eyes. Oh, appreciate it. I like your blue and green eyes. They're really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, um, uh, is it cool if you get a selfie or something? Or? Later that day, According to messages she sent to her friend via Discord, Chris's mother, Barbara, began experiencing high blood pressure and asked to be taken to the emergency room of a hospital, where it was determined that there was nothing wrong with her. Chris believed it was a combination of stress and the incoming magic energies of Dimension C-197. Also on that day, Jacob Sockness wrote that he was not destined for a normal life, as he was currently chasing after his love, who was also a goddess, over the internet. Chris wrote that she too would not have a normal life, asking what normal truly meant. Jacob then shared a photo of two individuals cosplaying as the Marvel character Deadpool and horror movie icon Michael Myers, respectively, asking if he and Chris could kiss like that during their attendance at BabsCon. 
Christine replied that she did not want to cosplay as Deadpool or a zombie, but was open to kissing Sockness in the future. Sockness then posted photos of certification certifying that he was free of sexually transmitted diseases for her. At around the same time, Twitter user Righteous for Quick, a supporter of Chris, posted a combined photo of himself wearing a Michael Myers mask with makeup on and Christine standing against the transgender flag, taking part in the Twitter hashtag campaign to declare that trans rights were human rights. Righteous later created his own card for Twilight Sparkle's secret chip fic folder depicting himself and directed Chris to it on Twitter, but did not receive a response. On October 25th, she received her new custom-ordered decks of cards for the MLP-themed game containing the cards she designed. Also on that day, she discovered on her front porch the book The Legend of the Ten Elemental Masters by Alalelia, a game developer who had gained online notoriety amongst forum subcultures some ten years prior due to his eccentricities. Finally on that day, Chris criticized Matt Groening and Seth MacFarlane, the creators of the animated series The Simpsons and Family Guy respectively, for maintaining the unaging and youthful appearances of their characters when they have in fact grown up since their conception. Lisa Simpson, for example, was allegedly an adult by then who was set to become the next president of the United States in 2020. She claimed the creators were doing so for monetary gain, and it was criminal of them to mischronicle their OCs. Chris admitted that she used to act the same, but was reconciling, making amends, and dealing with many original characters across dimensions. On October 26th, Christine livestreamed on YouTube for 91 minutes, playing the card game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Chip Fic Folder, utilizing her own custom-made expansion decks of cards. Ah. It took me a long time to set all this up, you know, just... Uh, so yeah, as you can see, I have a few lovely big boxes for my secret ship fix folder cards now. That's how tall this pony deck is gonna be. The one out of three decks is gonna be this big. Now that's a mighty meaty sandwich. But yeah, you're pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much gonna demonstrate a game of Twilight Sparkle's secret ship fix folder. I'll be a play Solitaire, which I have been able to figure out recently. <sighs> in case you're wondering what that was, that's our cat, Baby. Our gold cat, Baby. He has a bit of a nasal problem. We're, gonna, we're taking him to the vet. He's all right. Okay? We're taking care of him. So, don't ask about that. Don't troll me about that. Do not troll me about that. Oh, wait a minute. <sighs> Wee! That happened. There's one. Oh boy. Okay, let's do a shotgun wedding now between Romeo and Sturdy. What? <laughs> oh, why not? Hello, Sylvia. There's our cat, Sylvia. Stay off the table. And you can see how big this shipping grid can get, and this is why you need a card table or, you know. Well, the center point is an arm's length. Arm's length. Is this all there really is, though? Just me playing solitaire? I know my loves are around, but I don't always get to feel them all that much. You know, like, are they really there? Or, or, or are they just in me all along? Is this all a, just one big dream? Where am I living? Am I really living? Oh well, I'm sure fate and destiny will guide me. Now, let's see. Where were we? I will see. Stay off the table. Ah, thank you. Okay, game over. Of course, this is more fun when you got more than two. You have more than one player, and you're essentially clearing ships off of the board. Especially when you got one this full. This is full. I have a heavy bag here for you to put in the trash. I'll get to you in a moment, Mom. I love you. And I love you all. Be safe. See you next time. Bye-bye. At the same time, QB Farms user Duff conducted an interview with Alan Christopher, who had created several fundraising campaigns to fund Christine's travels. 
Christopher wrote that he loved Jacob Sockness and was waiting on Chris's permission to engage in a three-person polyamorous relationship involving himself, Chris, and Jacob. Alan said that he was banned from Kiwi Farms for his dedication to Christine and that he fully believed in the dimensional merge after Christine gifted him with special powers, which allowed his third eye to begin opening. Publicly, Christopher hoped to save enough money to attend BabsCon in California and meet with Christine, calling her his friend who gave him his psychic abilities. On October 27th, a Twitter user whose original character was made into a Twilight Sparkles secret chipfic folder card revealed that they had played the card game in person with Christine, who gifted them a selection of the cards. Chris also sent cards to other Twitter acquaintances whose OCs were depicted in her custom decks. This included Jacob Sockness, who received two cards for the game as well as a greeting card proposing her love for him, in which she wrote that her mother, Barbara, was holding on to a dolphin necklace that Sockness had sent to her and that his donated money was used on fresh food. The next day, Jacob wrote that he dreamed of Christine, the most heavenly goddess and his beautiful one true love, every night, for she was the only one who could soothe the soul of a fire-breathing dragon that was himself. Chris told him that he was not such a god, but merely a sorcerer and channeler, and was even doubting her own powers, being too tired to think after a rough and active day. At the same time, Righteous for Quick posted a short looping clip of himself feeling cute after sending prayers to Christine. The next day, a user on Reddit posted a drawing that Chris made of her neighbor and his cat on September 1st, 2018, claiming to share it online for the first time, though it had been posted on Kiwi Farms shortly after its creation. On October 31st, Chris noted for her followers that it was Halloween and told everyone to take care of themselves in these uncertain times. Members of the Kiwi Farms noted Christine's indeterminate demeanor and lack of her signature lightning bolt, blue heart, lightning bolt emoji's signature. During that same day, her online friend and enabler, Maker Night V, argued with Ben Saint about his continued use of Chris's characters and using his comics to mess with her. Saint angrily rejected Maker's claims, writing that he was writing an important story. Later on, Sockness tweeted at Chris a photo of a significant collection of free condoms. Chris did not respond. Maker Night V asked her directly if Jacob was visiting her as he had previously pledged he would. She replied that he was not coming to her house at that time. Finally, Christine reflected on the 12-year anniversary since his photos were shared on 4chan and launched her infamy. It has come to my attention that it has been 12 years since that ill-fated and ill-destined 4chan posting around Halloween 2007 that has caused my life to spiral down toward chaos and emotional and physical turmoil and trauma. Since then, our life at home has been restless and most stressful. Those photographs posted by my former associates at the game and hobby place undoubtedly thrusted me into an infamy that has not and likely will not be witnessed again in our lifetimes. Aside from all the trolling and hating of malcontent, among which I have met genuine fans who appreciate me for who I am and have met great and trusted acquaintances over the internet. The haters and admirers alike see my life as an inspiration, albeit for different reasons. Haters see me as something to which one should not become, and the fans see my works of art and triumph over torture like a shining beacon of guidance which they should follow. Alas, more can be done. I can be better. I can show both of these kinds of followers that I can be more than they expect. Warning lights are shining brighter than ever before, which I see clearly now, thanks to my loyal friends and allies. From now on, I'm working on myself, for myself. On November 1st, Righteous for Quick posted a doctored photo of himself in full Michael Myers attire and another individual at a Halloween party, with Christine photoshopped in to stand beside him, wishing that he could meet her. Chris did not respond to his post. Also on that day, Sarah and Steve publicly defended Jacob Sockness, as he had confessed to saying threatening things while angry and was ultimately not a risk or danger to anyone. 
Chris simply responded with, Hmm. Sarah and Steve then suggested that devoted followers and believers of Christine may call themselves Quickens, who practice Quickenism. Christine thanked them for their suggestion, but ultimately called their beliefs misguided, as she confessed to beginning to reconsider her current beliefs of learning magical powers and spiritual awakening. She suggested that the significance of her beliefs have been inflated by those who wanted to gain her favor, and now asked Sarah and Steve to find the true meaning of their being, since they were possibly as misguided as she had been. On November 3rd, Jacob Sockness shared an article which claimed that the Kiwi Farms willingly hosted future killers and had led to the suicides of four individuals, branding Joshua Moon, or Null, the site's administrator, the possible devil in the flesh. Sockness also blamed Null for attempting to drive Chris away from believing in the dimensional merge. On November 4th, Christine changed the details of her Twitter profile, swapping the profile picture from Maker's drawing of Chris Chan Sonichu to a recent selfie of herself looking solemnly at the camera, changed her name to Christine Weston Chandler, and rewrote her biography to read. I am Christine W. Chandler, creator of Sonichu, master of my own destiny. Her Discord profile also received the same treatment. Possibly in response to this latest development in her thinking, Sockness posted four photos in which he seductively poses in cowboy attire, writing that even though Christine was straying from her fated destiny, he was confident he could win her heart and make himself her new destiny. She wrote to him that she thought she loved and cared for him, but needed some time apart as she was going through this confusing time. Later on, Maker Night V denied supporting the Führer of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, as alleged by Sockness, accusing Sockness of believing such things. Her followers proposed that Jacob was trying to create a divide between her and Chris, so that he could discourage Chris from exploring the possibility that her magical powers, as boasted by Sockness, were untrue. Chris suggested that Sockness's previous comments were made by nefarious characters channeling through him, but was also open to the idea that he was pretending the channeling was happening, hoping for him to get some help, since there was good, positive light in his eyes. Jacob wrote that he was disgusted at Maker's supposed efforts at restricting Chris's ability to further her knowledge of Kidasuna, the supposed alien world with which Sockness had a strong telepathic connection, which was necessary in continuing her mission. Maker Nightfee replied that he created Kidasuna himself and took advantage of Christine because she could be easily convinced by his teachings, calling for an end of manipulations in her life. Chris was open to the concept of Kidasuna existing and Jacob exploring it, but confessed that the teachings were hurting her, adding to the struggles in her brain at the time. Maker reasoned that Kidasuna was Jacob's creation in the same vein as Quickville was Chris's creation, expressing satisfaction at her beginning to realize that worlds of fiction could not interact with her in the real world. Chris bounced back, stating that Maker had tried to convince her of alternate dimensions and communicable OCs much the same way as Jacob had, asking her to explain her intentions. Maker regretted what she had done in the past, but claimed only to have encouraged her ideas to make her feel comfortable and become better friends with her. The next day, Chris confronted members of the The Place Discord group regarding her realization that she may in fact not possess any superpowers or abilities to travel to other dimensions, if they even existed, and branded the group members dirty liars for encouraging her flawed beliefs when they themselves knew they weren't plausible. The The Place members in response tried to reason with her and play down her mental frustration. Maker Night V shortly after left the Discord group. Also on that day, Alan Christopher claimed that he was bullied and allegedly beaten by trolls who tried to manipulate Chris and turn her away from him. Their attacks seemingly included beating him up to the point that he required hospital treatment, receiving prank calls, and getting death threats on his social media accounts. Christopher was willing to save large amounts of money to ensure that Christine could attend the BAPSCON convention so she could meet her love, Jacob Sockness. He wished Christine and Jacob the best. On November 7th, Ben Saint posted an illustrated image of his characters Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk, 
deceased and corroded from the slime eliminating rain that was falling on them, implicating that Chris's actions caused their demise. Chris wrote that she was not amused by Ben's so-called carry-on and asked him to stop it, since she was conscious of his manipulation and would no longer take part in it. On November 10th, Saint hosted a four-hour-long livestream with Chris on the streaming site Twitch, during which she attempts to explain the reasons why she had her recent revelation. So, so what's the deal, Chris? What's worrying you so much these days? Oh, so many things. I've uh, all of a sudden have come to the realization that this whole believing in the merge of dimensions has all been a big pack of lies. Really? But yes, Ben, really. And don't give me that attitude, because you're involved in this too. I'm sorry, Christine. What, what exactly do you mean? How am I involved with, with whatever it is you're going through? Well, well, for starters, I've all, for the longest time, I've believed in a world, a dimension where my and others' creations actually existed, live in and breathe in as you and me are. Uh-huh. And that's why I wanted my sonic shoes and rose shoes to leave peacefully and not be and not suffer. Yeah. You know, and it was like, that was a significant part uh, of my adulthood. Um, gotcha. These sonic shoes and rose shoes that were born from my brain, but I believed to be living out their lives somewhere far away. It was only a couple of years ago that I became convinced by no good trolls that I could reach out and touch them. These the idea guys you're talking about? Yes, idea guy and gotcha. Boyd, who, co- who conned me sure. out of $6,000. Yeah, they fucking suck. So sorry that happened to you. Yes, thank you. Anyway, they had me convinced that I was married to Maggi Chan and sure. Silvana Cruzel and even Mewtwo. Can you believe that? I feel so ridiculous looking back that I even considered it a possibility. It's not. So what you're saying now is that it's not true. It's not. I was never married. I never even actually saw any of my loves. I thought I did, but I think it was just me trying hard to imagine a make-believe reality that was better than my own real reality. Right. Further, there is no dimension merge to take place. There is no dimension 1218 or C197. It's just all here, all now. Everything that's happening now is all we have. We, the people as we are, that's reality, and there's no escaping that. Sure, we can change as people. We can change our environment. We can get better or worse. But we can't escape this world no matter how hard we try. And the yeah. mistakes we make, we have to live with. Any bad consequences that we bring on to ourselves, we must deal with to the best of our abilities. And my concept of the merge was just me try, hoping to escape my mistakes and consequences in search of a better life. How does this realization make you feel? I feel saddened. Because right. for a long time there was a way out for me, or so I believed. My life is going to get harder now, but I'll be the person in charge for the first time in my life. And I know that it was my fault for believing in cartoon realities in the first place, but the likes of you didn't help matters either, agreeing with whatever crazy things I said. I'm sorry, Christine. I knew you were in a vulnerable place, and I I just didn't want to upset you by by telling you something you were going to reject because it made you feel bad. Yeah, but if people like you had never encouraged my beliefs, then I wouldn't attempt to think about them further. Y'all gave me false hope. But Chris, from very early on, when you started talking about your fantastical beliefs, you always rejected your critics and called them trolling haters. And you only accepted comments of praise and acceptance from the very trolls that wanted you make a fool of yourself. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm sorry for lashing out at you, Ben. Nah, it's all right. I'm sorry for being a jerk. I guess we're both not the most perfect people, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, we're only human. Yeah, I suppose we are. On November 14th, Chris tweeted a list of apologies addressing people she had wronged. There are many people throughout my life that had the displeasure of being maltreated by me. I always thought I was the victim and was in the right, but I know now that that's not the case. This is the list of long overdue apologies, going out to as many people as I can remember. I'm sorry to Megan Schroeder for taking advantage of her generosity and being a total creep to her. I'm sorry to Michael Snyder for causing trouble to his business and causing him bodily harm. I'm sorry to all those small security officers for giving them a needlessly hard time. I'm sorry to the GameStop employee for attacking him with mace. I'm sorry to all the members of my former parishes who had to deal with me. Most of all, 
I'm sorry to my mom and dad, to whom I could have been nicer and more appreciative. They tried their best, and I did not. I will from now. In the likely possibility I've left out your name from my list, I apologize. I would love to hear some apologies from all the trolling haters who hounded me over the past 12 years, but I know that's not going to happen. It's best to leave it and move on. That's all for now. Shortly after her Twitter posts, Sarah and Steve made their Twitter account protected, so only approved followers could view their tweets. On November 16th, Jacob Sockness claimed that Christine broke up with him, elaborating that her goddess-like powers had evaporated into the ether. He prayed that she could find the right man for the job. Jacob soon began following and interacting with Jessica Yaniv, another notable male-to-female transgender lolcow based in Canada. On November 19th, Chris's second garnishment case with second round sub for unpaid debt was filed, setting the next hearing date for January 15th, 2020. On November 22nd, Christine released her final YouTube video. All right, y'all know who I am? I'm Christine Weston Chandler. No Sonichu, no CPU, no Blue Heart. Anyway, I am recording this video to, to tell um, everyone, my followers, that my mind has gone to mush. There's been so much that's been ha that has been happening these past two months or so that has got me questioning who me really is. And I've come to the conclusion that I've been living a big fat lie. I've been lying to y'all, unbeknownst to myself, but uh, most importantly, I've been lying to myself. All this talk of the dimension merge and training to be a CPU goddess just poof, vanished from my mind. I think I was just believing Magi Chan was in my body as a way to push away the res all the responsibilities that I have at home. The dimension merge was all a ploy, a scheme to convince myself that there was salvation on the horizon, that there was a chance, a sliver of hope, that the all-powerful OCs that I loved uh, could come rescue me from my despair. But I realize now that that's not right. It's not right for me to hope that all my problems will disappear. So I must take responsibility in my actions, in my deeds, and be held accountable. No more escaping. I can't escape from my life as much as I would like to sometimes. That's a fan going click, 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 click. The air conditioner just died out. So I had to take that as a sign, a sign that this house needs a lot of maintenance. My mother needs all the help she can get. I'm not gonna lie and tell you it's gonna be easy, cause it's not, I know it's not. The trolls of the past sure threw a wrench in the works of my life that will take a mightily long time to get to, pre to get that out of there. One of the first things to be addressed is the uh, debts on the house. They need to be paid, so more money needs to come into the house. And it wouldn't be fair of me to keep begging my quote unquote fans for donations. That's not right for me to do. and. I'm genuinely sorry. I've been duped by bad actors for so much of my adult life, and I failed to notice the reality right in front of my eyes. I became a bad person too. I've hurt people, and I need to address that too. There's lots of stuff that I need to take care of, and one of which is getting out there and finding myself a job. It's not going to be anything glamorous, but it'll be good, honest work. It'll fulfill my life in ways that Sonichu and Rosechu and all the others could never. What's more, I'll be selling all my toys and games and all that. My eBay account is restricted, so I don't know how I'll be able to do that, but I know I gotta find a way somehow. There's so many things to address, but I will get to them all in due time. Um, but yeah, anyway, my new life goals are to leave my childishness and my online infamy behind me. Everything quick or Chris Chan or Sonichu, they'll all go to, they'll all be, it be relegated to the uh, anals of, uh, of internet history and I want to leave that world behind me I'm sure y'all can respect that so please don't troll me anymore hope as many of you will obey this reasonable request from me y'all tell me to get a job to get better to stop believing in these delusions uh, you got your wish you got what you asked for so please uh, no more trolling no more harassment I'm taking life back into my hands my own hands this person right here is in control from now on. Excuse me, I'm still a little frazzle brain. It's just because I had the sudden realization that I only got one shot at making the most of my life. One and only. So it's a big deal when you realize that I've spent the best years of my life getting misguided and manipulated 
and in my crazy state, I felt that my escape to fantasy would go on and on and on on and but unfortunately that's not the case. It's absolutely breaking my mind to think that the merge is not going to happen. So many new things in my mind. So please pardon me if I seem a little bit erratic, but the best way to move on from the life me and y'all know is for me to completely abandon it. I promise this video will be my last. Chris Chan is no more. It's just Christine from here on out. Once again, I'm sorry for all the bad things I've done, but a whole lot of y'all also got to say your sorries for taking advantage of someone who couldn't defend themselves. Hell, I could barely even think for myself. But what's done is done. I've dragged this out long enough. Goodbye. In response to the posting of the video, Null went on to the Chris Chan subforum on Kiwi Farms to write, He did it. Motherfucker actually did it. As of March 2023, her final YouTube video has been viewed over 320,000 times. Since her final announcements on Twitter and YouTube, very little has been revealed about Christine's activities. On December 2nd, Kiwi Farms user, the Sergeant at Arms, revealed that he successfully purchased and was sent from Christine a selection of signed Sonichu comics, a medallion, and a fan-made plush doll of Sonichu for $300 after organizing a deal with her over Twitter direct messaging. The forum user also claimed that Chris was in talks with other individuals keen on possessing her memorabilia, hoping to clear her home of the clutter in which she no longer saw value. While she allowed for some select individuals to message her on the platform, she refrained from tweeting or engaging with any of her supposed followers or haters ever since she posted her list of apologies on November 14th. Several users on Reddit and Kiwi Farms reported that they tried calling Chris's last known phone number, but their calls went unanswered. On December 20th, Chris's garnishment case was listed as closed, possibly due to an out-of-court settlement. On January 12th, 2020, Kiwi Farms user Ghidorah the Explorer went to Christine's house and took a series of pictures. They noted that they did not see Chris or her mother Barbara at the residence. The renowned wailing of the Chandler's pet beagles was also notably absent. In addition, the front lawn seemed to be recently mowed and the bushes had been trimmed. Due to the spread of COVID-19 and events over the weekend, that stay-at-home order means from March 30th until June 10th, if you don't have to go out, then don't. Throughout March and April, the United States continued to increase their response to combat the spread of the COVID-19 virus that was currently reaching all parts of the world. On March 30th, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam enacted a quote-unquote stay-at-home order which instructed Virginians to only leave their residences in absolutely necessary situations, preventing non-essential in-person encounters. A separate order called for the closing of facilities which could not function with 10 or less people at a single time. Former Christian followers expressed their concerns for Christine's and Barbara's safety, but as social distancing protocols had been rolled out, no one was thought to have gone to visit their home. On May 3rd, Reddit user Steve Howe 63 called Chris's phone, asking about her current situation. Hey, Christine, hey. Yes, hello? Christine, hey, I'm Steve. I'm glad to hear from you. Just a long-time observer wishing to check up on you. You okay? How's it hanging over there? Oh, it's been, ha it's been hanging all right. You know, yeah, yeah. it could be a lot better considering all this coronavirus scare going on. Right. Um, do you need any help around the house, like getting to places, getting food? Uh, no, I can manage. I'm faring well with the car. We can still get all the supplies we need. That's good to hear. Uh, so, Barbara's doing well? Yes, she is very fine, especially considering her age. Um, we couldn't go visit her doctor for a while, so I'm taking care of her in the meantime. Oh. You know, like cooking, taking her on walks around the neighborhood, getting her blood moving, you know, it's important. Oh, I didn't know that. What kind of meals are you making? Uh, for my mother... She gets meal replacement shakes, as per doctor's orders, but they get pretty tiresome after a while. I'm uh, making, like, a tomato egg soup every morning. Yeah. Lots of lightly fried and boiled greens, like broccoli, chives, lettuce, and cabbage, um, accompanied by carrots, potatoes, and the occasional sausage. 
and more occasionally a burger with fries, you know? Oh, nice. Right on, nice. <laughs> what you gonna do, you know? But yeah, we're both definitely eating more healthy and most definitely feeling the difference from it. Um, so how about the finances? Can you keep up with just your uh, SSI? SSDI. SSDI, right? Yes, we're managing. Um, last year I managed to sell off most of my past life possessions to those wanting to get a hold of, you know, precious Chris Chan artifacts, like they would say. So that has helped a lot. Yeah. Uh, we gave away our two dogs and three cats to some of our neighbors and other locals who could better manage them. Yeah. Furthermore, before the lockdown, I actually got a part-time job. Whoa. Really, you did? Yes. Nothing major, just like, you know, managing shopping carts in a supermarket, among other menial duties. Uh, hope my work will be secured by the time the lockdown is through. Uh, the governor said it'll last till June. So, just gotta hold on for a little bit longer. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, thank you. Uh, is it like the Walmart in Charlottesville, or the Target? Um, I will not divulge that information. I've learned my lesson. Right, okay, that's cool. But honestly, Christine, it's great to hear from you. Thank you so much for accepting my call. Uh, thank you very much. Just know that th there are a lot of people who are looking out for you and uh, want you to do well in life. I'm sure if they knew this new info, they'll be really relieved. I'm sure they will. So you have my permission to spread this call far and wide. Hope to post an update sometime later with even more exciting, positive news. Awesome, Chris. Thank you. Well, uh, you take care now. Yes, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. No other contact took place, and no new information was gathered until July 5th, 2021, when Christine suddenly messaged Kiwi Farms Administrator Null to first apologize for not appreciating his efforts at protecting her and pushing her to become a better person. She then went on to reveal to him that she had a loving female partner in her life, who she met at work. Chris reflected that she was over 50 years old, and that Chris pushed through her difficulties of autism and failings to note social cues to get better acquainted with her and grow their relationship. When Null asked for a photo, Christine declined for the moment, but promised that a so-called big public reveal would be coming soon. Null expressed his hope that things would work out for the pair. On July 29th, Chris returned to Twitter to announce that she had gotten married posting a photo of herself and her spouse, Bella Weathers, who she announced to be the love of her life. Christine further wrote that other future plans were to resettle her mother, Barbara, in a safe place, and then sell the family house so that she could live with her wife. Another more distant wish was for her to get sex reassignment surgery, which depended on the funds she could save. Chris closed by stating that she had been off of the internet for a significant time and felt better because of it. She thanked her genuine supporters and expected to return with another online update in a few years' time, hopefully with good news. Her sudden news of marriage caused a stir on Twitter, triggering the terms Chris Chan and Chris Chan did what? to trend on the site, briefly overtaking the trending topics representing the international multi-sport event, the Olympic Games, that were at the time taking place in Tokyo, Japan. On December 5th, 2022, new Kiwi Farms user, a saucer full of cum, posted the most recent known photo of Christine, working at a cash register at the Target retail store in Charlottesville, Virginia. The user soon had their personal details leaked by four members. Christine's life is one that no one should envy. Born into an ideal circumstances, Christopher and his parents struggled to deal with a condition with which they were ill-equipped to deal, but tried to the best of their abilities to live to the fullest. Unfulfilled, yet hopeful, Christian searched for happiness, a place to belong, and himself, only to find bullying, hostile environments, and losing his sense of self. Relying on her misery to carry herself forward, Christine learned to accept her imperfect and hopeless existence occasionally alleviating her lifelong lows with momentary highlights by consuming the kinds of media by which he was arguably raised. Somehow, a sudden outsider perspective caused her to rethink her way of living and found a new hope on the horizon, acknowledging that a girlfriend or any outsider help would not fix her life, but rather 
changing her own life from within. In the end, Chris left her endless cycle of mistake and ill-judgment-ridden adversity behind her, and matured, took control, and found love along the way. As the troll Clyde Cash once said, everybody has to grow up, but for some, growing up can take a very long time. Mother Nature is a cruel mistress. For every instance she brings water to quench the thirsty, she blows in a frosty wind to bitter the cold. Man has been so bold as to challenge her might, and even some of the most hardy and equipped have faced her only to never return. This is a tale of one such encounter between a band of resilient men and their maker in her most hostile of worlds. A story that shall live forever. A venture which tested the limits of human hardihood, endurance, and courage. <laughs> 